Good morning, this is Meteorologist GT with a new edition of This Week in Weather. And uh, I know many of you expecting the usual, hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks opening, and that's fine, but I usually do it for the winter time. In the summer months here, things can be a little more serious from an agricultural perspective, which is a big part of my business. And we also have some serious weather to talk about here in the Mid-Atlantic this weekend. So, I don't think we'll open with the... Um, fancy typical beginning like you usually think anyhow or that or that you want so let's get right to it lots of talk about in this week in weather We're obviously going to talk about the heavy rains coming from portions of the mid-atlantic many areas in northern virginia and maryland will flood again this weekend uh, the flooding is going to be a problem for many areas this summer i believe now i have not released the summer forecast yet but i will short probably this weekend i finally will be able to release it to the public um, so you can take a look at it then. So, and lots to talk about, so let's get uh, right to it. First, we'll start out by taking a look at the uh, drought monitor, and this is a usually very useful map. Um, many of you do ignore it or don't know the significance of it, and the reason why it's important is because when you have large areas of intense drought like we have here, what happens is it can alter the jet stream pattern. Similar so if the drought area, let's say, was in another location, but just, just take this one exact here. This, this has a tendency of supporting the heat ridge or dome in this area. And as we go through the weather maps, you'll see that this is where, in fact, the dome is going to set up. Now, um, sometimes the drought will be set up in a different area. Some years we don't have a large drought, in which case the influence of the drought uh, on the overall weather pattern uh, is negligible but in this case we have a pretty substantial drought and the impact is quite quite serious now this next image here um, shows you is something known as the uh, quick drought um, and you can see it here now this is actually as of May 27th and what this does is this shows the short-term uh, trends over the last four weeks a uh, relative to the historical average you can see that right here so obviously the uh, brown stuff such as it is, is uh, drier than normal conditions, as you can see, much drier. And we have this dry air developing in the mid-central portion of the Midwest. Down here is the drought, developing some dryness here. But we're still pretty wet in the eastern United States and Atlantic region. So um, obviously, uh, if this dryness were to continue, it might expand and, and become a bigger portion of the drought over the southwestern states. So that's something to watch for in the future. Now. This here is interesting. This is from NASA, and this looks at soil moisture conditions. And uh, the upper left image shows, of course, here um, soil moisture down to, as you can see, one one uh, one 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 meter, one feet, uh, one meter three feet. And you can see that um, the soil moisture over the Ohio Valley and into the Appalachians is quite wet, uh, and also over the Upper Plains. Um, now the uh, soil moisture drought indicator you can see we actually have this whole big drought area in here and then the eastern third of the country is actually quite wet so uh, that's significant as well because this large area of wetness i believe supports a mean trough staying for most of the summer over the eastern u.s now this image here um, in all three of these maps you can notice that the eastern u.s relative to normal is quite wet now the plains is pretty dry, portions of the upper plains, midwest, uh, lower plains, southwestern states is pretty dry. But the eastern third of the country is actually quite wet relative to normal. And this favors a persistent trough in the jet stream over the eastern third of the country of the east coast for a good portion of the summer. Now let's take a look at what's going to happen in the Mid-Atlantic this weekend. Now this is rainfall for the month of May. All right, So this is the total month of May. Let me see you can highlight that this is for the last 30 days and so see this all the way through May and uh, you can see that uh, obviously you know here's the uh, Ellicott City disaster area nine inch rains up in here but this purple stuff is really the brown stuff this light blue purple light excuse me it's light violet color seven inches and this dark blue stuff this dark purple stuff is 10 11 12 inches of rain in here and in here and in here and down in this area and over, I mean very impressive rainfall amounts now notice in North Carolina it's much, much in this area down here, you know, Raleigh, Greensboro, it hasn't had quite as much rain. Uh, still three or four or five inches of rain, which is not bad. Uh, southwest North Carolina, uh, pretty good rains in this whole area right here, as you can see. And the eastern portions of West Virginia. You know, the Appalachians run this way, so this is usually Ohio. This portion of West Virginia is usually the Ohio Valley, closer to Kentucky and Ohio. 
and this portion over here to the east is more like the mid-atlantic region so you can see good rains in western maryland notice that the rains are not quite as heavy once you get north of the pennsylvania maryland border it's mostly been a lower mid-atlantic type of thing with the big rains here okay so uh, we can compare that to the actual rainfall anomalies now this is percentage of normal and again notice the pennsylvania maryland border look at this folks right here now it's still been fairly wet in Pennsylvania. This green stuff is 150% above normal, but along the Pennsylvania border, down here, all of this is all this blue stuff. You know, 175 to 200% above normal. Very, very wet over the past uh, 30 days. This image here is the same image, but this is the uh, uh, actual inches. So this is positive right here. So this is all positive images right there. So this is. 10 inches, 8 inches above normal, right in this area, you can see, right here. So all this blue stuff is anywhere from 4 to as much as 7, 8, and 8 inches of rainfall above normal. Now in here, notice we have very close to normal uh, conditions in here, actually in central North Carolina, Raleigh, over to Greensboro. West of North Carolina Mountains also been running pretty wet. You can see 6, 8 inches above normal, 10 inches above normal there. Hampton Roads, not as wet. Still pretty good, a couple of inches above normal rainfall, but nothing like we've seen. Now notice what happens once you go west of the Appalachian Mountains. Look how much drier it is over Kentucky and Ohio and the western portions of West Virginia. Okay, that's an interesting map. We look at this on over the eastern half of the country. We can see very clearly that this, this, this is the, here's the rainfall here. New England, much, much drier than the mid-Atlantic and the southeastern states. Um, and then, of course, you have this pocket of above normal rainfall here. So what we're seeing is a trough doing this, and the rain's coming in here, and then it's sliding off the coast or coming inland, and you, New England's missing the rain. So that's some indication of what's going on with the pattern. All right, temperatures, last seven days in the upper left, last 30 days, very warm, just like April is very cold. May's turned up very warm. Now, here's what happens here. This is Saturday evening, 8 p.m. We have this low-pressure area developing right here on the coast. And then this is Sunday at the 2 p.m. So what happens is the low actually goes inland a little bit. You see how it like drifts inland? And that drives the rain inland as well. Uh, we can see this in more detail. Now this here is uh, the wind pattern, 900 millibars, 1,500 feet above the ground. And again, you can just see the general circulation here. You know, the blue color, uh, 12, 15, 18 uh, knots, uh, you know, 12 to 25 miles an hour. But there's the low, and all you can see the wind is doing this. Notice how strong the winds are up in here into Washington, D.C. Then you have the rainfall coming down the Appalachians, the Piedmont area like this, and then into North Carolina. So actually over this portion of Virginia, Richmond, Williamsburg, Hampton Roads, on sun Saturday late afternoon evening, there might not be that much rain. There'll be some thunderstorms and showers, but maybe not that much. Now the next slide, um, we can see this is, um, this is Saturday evening. So you can see the low developing here. Okay, and it's driving the wind in, the, in this area, I should say, the low is developing here. And you can see the uh, winds are coming in and driving the rain. And this, uh, this, these areas here, this t green stuff, which is 24, 25, 28 knots, that's where your best rains develop, right in this area. So this is Saturday here. I got these slides out of order, my mistake, and this is a Sunday here. Okay, so you can see that definitely the lows drifts southward here over time. Now, this is the total rainfall for the next 24 hours. This takes us to Saturday night, 11.58, p.m., almost midnight. So you can see uh, we have some area of rain down in here, east of Richmond and Newport News, Williamsburg, down towards Hampton Roads. But notice the gap in this area, not much in the Piedmont here. The rain's coming in this direction. So you can see uh, Baltimore, northwest Virginia, uh, east of Charlottesville, Fredericksburg, Manassas, getting some storms down in there. And then it's rotating in this direction because of the low pressure area. Now, this is the total rainfall through a Monday morning. Wow. Yeah. This is the problem here. A lot of these areas in northern Virginia are saturated. There's a lot of farms, a lot of uh, uh, vineyards in the northern half of the Piedmont. Now these black dots, they represent the cities, the key cities. So you can see this is Charlottesville, this is Richmond obviously, this is Norfolk, Elizabeth City, this is Raleigh, this is Roanoke, this is uh, Lynchburg, that's a Baltimore, there is DC, there's uh, uh, Martinsburg, there's Salisbury. But notice all the big rains, uh, mostly north of Richmond, mostly. 
and close to Charlottesville. So all the big rains in this area. Now there are some blobs in here at pretty good rains of three, four inches, but most of it's in Northern Virginia. And you can see some areas up to seven inches in this higher terrain. And that's gonna cause flooding. Uh, even in Ellicott City, where the rivers are still saturated there, they get three, four inches of rain. So it's a very significant situation, uh, especially you know north of Interstate 64, pretty much. All right, um, now here I have how it develops. This is Saturday uh, at, at uh, 8 a.m. Saturday morning. We can see the storms um, very nicely um, over the, the northern Shenandoah Valley into uh, eastern portions of West Virginia. Then the activity is now moving uh, down here. You can see this. This is uh, noon on Saturday, a 17Z, which is um, uh, oh, actually it's 1 o'clock, sorry, Saturday afternoon. And you can see the showers and storms moving through Lynchburg, Charlottesville, some storms developing by South Hill and Boston, and the activity, but it's still mostly in the Virginia Piedmont and the Shenandoah Valley. And then here we can see the HRR model forecasting conditions, what the, what the radar is going to look like at um, 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. As a lot of a lot of storms in Western Virginia. And again, what happens is that the model has the low here. So everything is circulating in this direction. You can see this is Charlottesville and this is Roanoke and here's Lynchburg. It means a lot of storms. There's DC in the Virginia Piedmont according to this model. Now what happens is this swings on through. There's some storms in Hampton Roads, but notice that Richmond has got this hole. See this hole in Richmond? Saturday afternoon. Maybe not. What's going on in Richmond? So if you're going to, let's say, the uh, Taste of Virginia Festival over at Innsbruck, you might make it through most of the day. Okay, uh, without any rain. Now this is uh, bo this bottom image here. This is a Saturday at 10 p.m. and do have thunderstorms in Hampton Roads at Virginia Beach uh, coming in for the uh, Patriotic Festival there. So um, touch and go in a lot of areas. But if you're in the Virginia Piedmont, a lot of big storms coming up there. All right. Now let's talk about a few other things. This is the GFS model from May 25th, valid for Saturday afternoon max temperatures. And yeah, it's showing temperatures of 125 degrees in Southern Texas. I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And the thing is they keep tinkering around with the GFS and it's actually getting worse. You know, it's, well, I like the European. It's, and the European is not perfect, but it doesn't do that sort of weird shit. Now this chart, again, this is from weathermodels.com and Dr. Ryan Mao, you can see here, this is as of May 25th, you can see how different the models are. So the green uh, and uh, the red are GFS models. Okay, so the green here and the red are GFS models. You can see how they're dropping off here. And the blue and the black are European models and they're actually going up. So um, yeah, the, the, the model's got a problem here. Now here's how the pattern develops over the next, um, few next several days this is as of a monday afternoon we still have our trough here coming down uh there's our ridge over the deeps uh northern mexico here this trough is coming in another one's coming into canada now by uh wednesday june 6th we have our heat dome right here and notice how similar that is to where the drought is located let me call up the drought map so you can see it oops there it is so that's pretty impressive, I think. A very nice correlation between the two features, um, uh, very clearly seen here. There's your, Now, the other thing is there's your trough, which is where the moisture is and where the soil conditions are quite wet over the East Coast. It doesn't change. And as we go through these maps here, this is just briefly without the heat over Texas, very impressive. But notice, in, in, in for example, Des Moines, Iowa, 78 degrees, Chicago, 78 degrees, St. Louis is like uh, 85. Uh, and then, you know, this is uh, Sunday, Monday. So there's a lot of heat over Texas and into uh, it spreads into Oklahoma and Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, but it doesn't go any further north than that. This is Tuesday, Wednesday. You can see the heat trying to spread. It doesn't get to Chicago, barely gets to Des Moines, doesn't do much in St. Louis yet. There you go. So it just doesn't get a chance to spread. And the reason for that is this. Here's the upper air patterns, GFS ensemble. And you can see the heat dome associated with the drought over the western Texas and the southwest areas. The upper left is June 8th and the bottom map is June 10th. We have the deep trough over the east coast and that keeps that ridge suppressed. So in order to get a big heat wave in the midwest of the Plain states coming into the you know eastern United States, we need to get that trough on the east coast to leave and that's not going to happen. Now this is the European model 
and you can see that it actually has a deeper trough. If you look at the trough here; it's much deeper. Um, you can see it plunging way down here. And if you compare that to this, you'll see that it's much different. That's the GFS. There's the European deeper trough, and of course the dome, such as it is, which is here, gets pushed further back to the west. As uh, this trough comes in, the dome gets pushed that direction. There you go. And now finally, we do see some heat coming up here on the European model here. You can see this is Thursday and Friday, but again, it goes up to, let's say, the Kansas-Nebraska state line. It doesn't get in Chicago. It doesn't get into Illinois. It spreads a little bit into, into it, it doesn't get into Iowa. It spreads a little bit into Missouri and Illinois, but that's about it. It doesn't come any further east, and, and it can, not in this pattern. All right, briefly, El Nino, La Nina, La Nada, what's going on there? You can see most of the water temperatures in the regions are above normal. Uh, you can see the big buildup of warm water here. This is from last week, but you can see this is very impressive warm water, and this is headed towards the surface, 3 degrees centigrade above normal. That's, this is El Nino building, and it's coming in fast. Now look at the change in the uh, climate models. This is the CFS. So let's look at this one here. This is um, May 1st. You can see that everything is nice and flat with a slow incline. Now this is the new one here. This is May 30th and you can see a much more rapid increase. This is clearly by, uh, this is July or August, we have a weak El Nino. And by the autumn, we're definitely in a weak, uh, weak to moderate El Nino. This is what the European model, model was showing uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago. So that's, this is kind of important. This is a big shift to go from this to this. That's a big change. All right. Longer term, what happens? This is week three, European weekly from Thursday night, Friday morning. Trough on the west coast, trough on the east coast, bada boom, bada bing. The heat ridge stays over Texas and Oklahoma in the drought. In terms of rainfall, it still looks pretty wet over the mid Atlantic states. Uh, maybe more over the mountains and on the coastal areas. Temperatures look pretty chilly, as you can see on the bottom right image. And then uh, beyond that, we look at uh, here's the CFS. CFS is still pretty wet here to week three. A lot of rain above normal rainfall here so th there is that concern as well if we look at week four this takes us to the end of june going towards july 4th and you can see the heat dome but look where it is over texas louisiana well what that does is that places your thunderstorms in this area here and they end up tracking in this direction towards virginia and pennsylvania so this is a fairly stormy pattern potentially going to the end of the month and we can see uh, uh, on the we, on European anomaly precipitation, here's the precip here, and this is the temperatures. Temperatures are real close to normal. Still some areas showing above normal rainfall over northern and northwest Virginia and Maryland. And then um, if we look at the week five, this here, uh, excuse me, this is week four um, CFS rainfall, and it's still showing some areas of slightly above normal, not as much though. And then week five, I should say here, week five, this is the European weekly. Not much change the first week of July. Trough, trough, heat dome is over Texas and Mexico. And then even week six, this is mid-July. Again, this is real speculative. Goes out in time, but that's a, pretty, that's a pretty deep trough over the East Coast. So that heat dome is not going anywhere. Um, as long as that trough stays on the East Coast, you know, it's going to be a stormy, wet, and cool summer, it looks like. I'll go into this more in the summer forecast later on, but uh, that's for another video or another explanation. So anyway, this is Meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon on the Twitter page and on the Facebook page.